Hello, my name is Joe Wright and I am the guy who has been responsible for the UKIE Country Kit since the 2019 release of Civil 3D. Now this is a new features video for the 2024 release. If you are new to Civil 3D or new to the UKIE Country Kit, then I would not suggest starting here. Instead, a link will be appearing up here at the top of the screen in about five seconds. If you click this link, you will be taken to a pretty rounded introduction to using Civil 3D in the UK and Ireland, and it will allow you to explore the key benefits of this Autodesk Country Kit. If you are here for the new features in this year's Country Kit, then great, you're in the right place. I have made this video as straightforward and as easy to understand as possible. The topics covered here are not necessarily advanced as I hope they will appeal to infrequent users as well as to those that use this daily. I will also be avoiding detailing the new features found inside the core Civil 3D product. These can be found elsewhere. This video focuses on the country kit. So welcome and enjoy. Basically, in this session, I will be covering three areas. One, layer management tools two, changes to sub-assemblies, and three, the new UK signed content library. Okay, so new and improved layer management tools. Firstly, as you're no doubt aware, all the layers in the country kit template are based on the Uniclass system. This means layer names are formatted similar to this. However, Uniclass is a developing system with new notations and classifications being added and often we find some are improved, replaced or retired. Sometimes we cannot be sure if a layer name we are using is currently compliant with the standard. We have a new checking tool that reports which layers are compliant or, or not as the case may be. And the old layer conversion utility has been updated and is now called the layer update tool. This ensures your current drawing is up to date with the latest UKIE template and will bring, bring any retired Uniclass layers up to date. Also, I'm going to address the elephant in the room when it comes to GG184 support. Next, and this is new for Civil 3D, we'll be looking at uncompiled version subassemblies. Whilst we're not going to dwell on the mechanics of this, because this is actually a core feature and it's not specific to UK IE alone, but we will be seeing how this affects general day-to-day -day usage and the tool palette. Finally, we shall take a look at the new UK road sign tool. This is a dynamic block library containing a lot of UK signs. I know many of you may have used or have colleagues who use third party applications to manage road signs and road markings. Now, these premium products have matured over the years, and it is important to note that the library in this country kit is not designed to appeal to someone who has such a third party bolt on. Rather, this is aimed at the occasional user who may need access to signing tools, but does not have access to a premium signage license. As such, and as this is an instructional video, I shall be going into some detail with this so that users with no signage exposure can get the best of this new content library. Let's take a look first at those layer management tools. Oh, and don't forget to launch Civil 3D using the Civil 3D 2024 UKIE icon as using this icon will ensure you have the correct profile and tools. You can be pretty sure you have almost everything in order if you can see the tool space box at the side containing the UKIE specific reports on the toolbox tab. And most importantly, when you launch the tool palettes, it clearly references 2024. But I'm going to switch off the tool palettes for now, as I am running in a low resolution mode just for this video so that you see bigger text and everything else is easier to visualize. As I mentioned, 
the country kit is based around the NBS's Uniclass 2015 layering system. The layers in the default 2024 drawing template all match this standard, well, with the exception of layer zero and def points. But I'm going to open an older drawing made using the UKE 2023 template from last year, so we can see how useful these new layering tools can be. Right, OK. Let's examine the layers. I was made aware that one of those that I included in the 2023 template was not Uniclass compliant. That one, ZZ7050, for the view frame text. Hmm. Let's visit the MBS website and see why it is not correct. So, ZZ7050. Oh, look, that notation doesn't exist. Bah. <clears throat> All the others in this layer filter are ZZ7060. And look, ZZ7060 is a valid notation. Ha ha! Bomb line, I'd made a typo. Hey, it happens more often than we'd all like to admit. Obviously, I fixed this for the new 2024 template. Here we go. Look, inside new drawings, that's now fine. So, back to the Uniclass checking tool I mentioned, because this is designed to help. And the best part about it is that it's simple and it will query the NBS servers live so that you are guaranteed to get an up to date analysis. To get to this application, click the toolbox tab and expand the UK and Ireland reports and then expand additional tools. Here it is, look next to the layer update tool. Simply right click and press execute. Here we go. Let's generate a basic report on this new drawing. Now the output can be in a few different formats, but the web page one works the best. I'll tick the box here to ensure I get up to date tables live from the MBS and then click generate to get the report. It's that simple. Yay, fantastic. With the exception of the reserved AutoCAD layers, zero and def points, all the default layers in this new drawing are Uniclass compliant. The report even tells me the tables it checked and the date of capture. Right, let's try this on the 2023 drawing. See if it picks up my typo. Uh, I don't need to download the tables again, so I can save a few seconds by not ticking this box. And drum roll. Blimey neck. Whoa. Whoa. Well, it found my typo for sure. But what about all the other failures? Hmm. Let's do that again. But this time we'll create a detailed report. This will give us more information on the reason for non-compliance. It appears most of the pipe network layers are failing the check and it seems to be struggling with a specific notation point in the specification tree. Let's copy one out of the report and check it on the MBS website. Oh, not found. Well, that's strange. I double checked all these last year. But look here. Expand your results by including codes that are not in use. Oh, not in use. Click the title. Oh, it was redrawn and replaced by another. And this is a replacement. SS503508. It's quite a subtle change, but nevertheless, these are now easy to identify as a failure without even visiting this website. Well, of course, I am on top of this because the new 2024 template is currently fully compliant and the good old layer update tool will no doubt bring older drawings up to speed. Let's do it. The two new things in the layer update tool are this generate report box, which I shall take. And this tick box here will automatically purge unused, uncompliant layers. 
let's hit the process button and let it do all the work. And dee 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 do. That's it, finished. The new reports lists all the layers that have been changed. And look, you can see those pipe network layers that fail compliance. And there, then there's my typo. Way! Looking at the layers in the drawing now, you can see we are getting everything on an even keel. Look, my typo is fixed. Right, let's run the report again. This time I'm going to choose full layer listings, which will show failed layers in red and compliant layers in green. Way! Looks like just zero and def points are failing now. But I'll double check and I'll run that basic report again, just in case. So it shows just the failed layers. And look, all fine and dandy. Brilliant. Right, let's go back to the tool palettes once again. They are very important. There are some things on there that are new and there are some things on there that may have sneaked in on previous releases. So here we go. There are now seven UKE tabs, one more than last year. I'll come to the new one shortly. But for now, it's worth noting that the user guide is now updated every year. So opening it, you should find documentation to cover a specific part of the country kit like the new Uniclass layer report we've just used. And as you can see, it also gives a few examples of some of the reports that you can generate using that tool. Now, on the top level tool palette and introduced a few years back, you may have noticed a second non-default drawing template here. And this was specifically introduced to address the needs of the GG184 DMRB specification. As you see, when we start a new drawing based on this template, the layer structure is similar to Uniclass. However, it is quite different. And to see how this specification differs from Uniclass, it's probably a good idea for us to reference the actual specification document. And this shows a snippet of it. Essentially, it stipulates no underscores and a maximum of six characters for the notation. Hmm. The problem here, of course, is that different stakeholders have different expectations. And this template was included to help mitigate this situation. For 2024, I have included although unsupported and undocumented, a small Civil 3D app to transpose Uniclass layers to the GG184 format. Let's look at that 2023 drawing again, which as we saw earlier is now fully Uniclass compliant. Look, underscores. To run the app, you need to first run the Uniclass checker. And we did that earlier. And then you will have a new command that you can run from the command line. Look, it's namely UKIE Uniclass 2, that's the number 2, GG184. Like all my stuff, I try to keep it simple. Just agree to the warning and you're done. The command line will give you more detail. But essentially, the layers will be altered so that GG184 stakeholders are happy. Beware though, this is irreversible and hence is currently unsupported. I've included this because it's very useful. And look, those Uniclass layers have all been stripped to the expectations of GG184. The tool parts, of course, are essential for designing assemblies or cross sections if you prefer. And this brings us to the section on subassembly changes. Basically, the way subassemblies can work in Civil 3D has been improved, mostly to help portability, version control, but also to take into account future operating system changes. 
Back to the Tool Palace. And as I mentioned, they are the home of many UK and Irish specific sub-assemblies and assemblies. Whilst the main UK design palette looks very similar to last year's, it does contain a whole bank of replaced sub-assemblies. These have been rejigged to work with the new way. They're uncompiled and support version control. Here you can see the version number when I roll over the subassembly. And because they are no longer compiled, this means they can easily be exported, reused, packaged, updated, and most importantly, different versions of the same subassembly can be controlled and managed. They still work the same, but just different. Here we go. Changing the water line offset variable to ensure the kerb is 0.125 from the road surface while still respecting the geometry of the physical block. Another advantage with the uncompiled sub-assemblies is that the help system now opens a PDF help file directly rather than the cumbersome older Windows CHM variant. variant. So it's quick and easy to reference the documentation and see what a variable does. Look, there's the waterline offset. Peeking into the new for 2024 sub-assembly container in the prospector, you can tell these are of the newer type of sub-assembly. Those that support versioning, because as you can see, there's a version number inside the brackets. And it's in various other places too. Uh, now, what about your old drawings that will have used the older, now depreciated sub-assemblies. Well, nothing has been removed, and that is what the new tool palette tab is all about. It contains the older, compiled sub-assemblies. Essentially, they function the same as the new ones, except they're not new, they're the old ones. It's just that this type of sub-assembly is now considered end of line, and moving forward, only the new ones will be updated. You can see in the prospector the difference between old and new. Also, by keeping the older sub-assemblies, that means you won't have any issues when you open an older drawing. So this new tab is paradoxically where you'll find all the old stuff. Time to move on. And time to look at the new road sign insertion tool. For this year's country kit, we've included a small utility that references UK sign content. And remember, this is not designed for a sign aficionado. It is aimed at the civil 3D user who does not have access to premium signing tools. It's a simple design and a simple premise. Find, search, drop. Let's see. The utility is in the toolbox, the UK IE 2D sign insertion tool. Here we go. First up, it lists everything. But using the three search criteria at the top of this box, you can start to knock down the list. Let's try and find a giveaway sign by using the free text filter. There she blows. Once selected, you can then choose a size from the available options and then press insert to add it to the drawing. Simple. Done. I can then quickly add a supplementary plate again by choosing the size. Now, at this point, let's examine carefully the size options here, especially if you are unfamiliar with UK signs, and let's face it, this is to whom this utility is aimed, because on the whole, plates with legends are sized based on the height of an imaginary lowercase x. It's called x height. The box here lets you know. It sort of makes sense because signs are meant to be read in differing conditions and it's not the overall height of the site sign that's important, but it's the readability of the plate. 
all available excites for a particular plate are shown. And there we go. Found, sized, dropped. I can add a couple more triangular signs and I can limit the shape choice. We'll have a bend to the right. Notice the size options are now in millimeters because there's not a specific legend here. And we'll also include a warning sign about queuing traffic. Then if I take off the triangular filter, I will be able to see available supplementary plates. As before, sized as an X height. Remember, it's a simple process. Drop and then change. Let me explain. Rather than having a complicated dialog box, just find the sign, select the size and insert it. It's easy. If you wish to change anything other than the sign or the size, then do it after the event. For example, maybe the hill at head is 15%. Well, it's just an AutoCAD attribute that can be easily changed using simple AutoCAD tools. Maybe you want to change the distance on the plate. Well, that too is an attribute. Hmm. And if the text spills out or it looks wrong, then you can simply select the block and change its width dynamic but it's easy after all in this case uh, the size is based on X height I've included three new fonts and three AutoCAD textiles have been added when you use this utility and they match unsurprisingly the text fonts used on UK road signs now there are some special characters that are not shown on the keyboard and rather than using a complicated character table, they're just assigned to some unused keyboard characters. So, for example, I'd like to bet you've never seen a dollar symbol on a UK traffic sign. Well, I've hijacked that keyboard key to give you that extra half mile. Now, here is a table that shows the special characters. And this can also be found in the documentation. We'll be using some more later. But let's tidy this up and move on. OK, let's now look at the speed limit signs. You can choose set limits or one that's defined by an attribute. Ooh, that looks wrong. But that's just a thumbnail that I think, so don't worry. Hey, I'll choose that. Uh, if I know a sign's reference, I can also type it in the free text field. P614, for example, is a no U-turn sign. Let's drop that one in as well and maybe pick another because it's a one way street. Find, select, size and drop. And just to prove that speed limit sign is it anything like its thumbnail preview, let's make it five like in the original image. Voila. But that's no good. I actually want it 50 for fun. I now want to add an unsuitable for goods vehicle sign. Uh, I've typed in goods and that's not one of these. Sometimes you will need to second guess if you're using the free text filter. I can't find that one by searching for goods. But if I search for un, as in unsuitable, I, I find it. That's because the description of the sign I wanted referenced HGV rather than goods vehicle. So a good search was unfruitful. Also, if you know the schedule the sign belongs to, that might narrow things down further for you. The schedules match those listed and detailed in the Traffic Signs Regulations and General Directions 2016 Specification Guide. Here it is. Whilst I've yet to include every single sign and every single schedule, that's included in this document, I am well on my way. Schedule 11, for example, is all about informational signs. Let's find it, because the sign I want is a dead end sign. And that is almost certainly part of Schedule 11. After all, it would give me a lot of information, information about the road ahead. 
I probably would have searched for dead or end for this sign, but looking at the actual description, it contains none of those words. Thankfully, if you reference this document or you know the Department for Transport drawing number, you can normally get straight there. In this case, I think I'll pick this one here, P817. And all that's left for me to do now is type in that diagram number into the free text filter which will show you all the variants of that particular sign in the available sign list. So search, find, size and place. Here we go. OK, so let's select a circular height restriction plate. So circular as the shape filter and we'll put height in the free text field. That's the fella. We could choose a complex fixed plate like this one, but let's choose a simple fixed plate for now with an arrow on it. Look again at the shape filter. There is another option called variable plate, and this will let you choose a blank plate that gives you free reign. You might want to filter it down further using the schedule listings so you can get the right color for the right task. We'll choose this one with four legend lines. Notice that the X site here is variable. This means you can choose any size between two set limits. Just use this slider or enter a value. Boom! Now they are dropped. Let's change the attributes. Bear in mind it's not intelligent enough to calculate imperial to metric, so make sure they are matched. Next, the arrow sign. Again, this is a special character from the table shown earlier. Greater than goes one way, less than goes the other. And finally, the variable plate. Notice as I fill this in, the use of the hash sign to generate the feet and inches symbol. Again, this character is a special one and was shown on the table earlier and of course at the end a quick merge to change the width now let's add the start of a 20 zone followed by an abrupt end into a country lane i speeded the video up there did you notice let's search by schedule again this time schedule two which does actually contain the odd rectangular sign like this one I'll drop this between these posts and see what we get. Oh, I want a longer one. Well, it is dynamic and can be stretched in set increments. See? It can also be flipped to change direction. Nice. And this sort of introduces the directional signs included for Schedule 12, which are split into subsections for motorways, primary roads, tourist signs and the like. Let's choose primary roads. Look, it contains those generic plates we used earlier, but also those indicating direction. Let's select a simple one first, and then I'll pick one with a name on it. There we go. And another with a slight variation for underneath. Find it size it, insert it, mess around with it after. OK, let's change the first one. Uh, marble arch. Too small, make it bigger. Direction arrow the wrong side, flip it. The second one, not for rising all, we want Buckingham Palace. Again, that's too small, make it bigger or small. Or, or flip it. You get the idea. Finally, the bottom one. That's going to be London Bridge. Now watch carefully here as I change the root number. Some of those special characters I mentioned can alter the spacing subtly. An explanation mark is the smallest spacing. A plus sign is something slightly bigger and an underscore is a full space. Or of course you could use a combination of more than one. See the documentation. Hey ho, let's get the right width.
okay now sometimes things just don't look right for whatever reason and a lot of the directional signs have extra grips to subtly change the text position like so let's move on okay we'll add a quick boundary sign there you go not notting nottinghamshire let's add worcesters worcesters i can't even pronounce it let no spell in never mind north yorkshire it is then he let's speed the video up here i'm just going to declare a bus lane and add a speed camera sign and then and the bus lane there you go next let's inform drivers of their impending doom the dreaded merge which is always somehow better if everyone is told to merge in turn there you go and let's declare some lanes for turning and encourage no last minute changes done back to normal speed let's add a few motorway direction signs and let's try to break things we'll have one of these three legend lines and a big chevron type arrow indicating direction I'll insert it between the, these poles and just accept the defaults. Now, these are just simple dynamic blocks. They can be replicated or manipulated using basic AutoCAD commands. So I'm going to copy this below and flip it. Voila. Now, best practice here is to flip a sign after you've changed the attributes, because flipping will also flip the text insertion point which will confuse things. Let me explain. If I change these attributes after flipping the sign, the sign no longer appears to behave. However, as all these direction signs have grips on the text, if you do get into a pickle, then the fix is just a few clicks and drags away. And once fixed, it will of course behave itself once again. So I'll place a couple more direction signs, one here, and and the same one there and i'll introduce a mileage sign i'll choose this one with three destination let's move this up a touch and alter the attributes and size on the first one so the mileage sign well we've been to london built the motorway between the Yorkshire and lincolnshire so let's head for bonnie scotland and the m8 the first thing to point out here before we start singing Proclaimers songs, is that the title font on this plate is Transport Motorway. Now this is a limited font by design and only includes characters such as M for motorway and NESW for North, East, South and West. So don't be surprised if you get X's if you use an unsupported character in this title line. We'll stick with the M8. Let's add the destinations first. Livingston and Edinburgh, if my typing is up to the job, and Glasgow. Now let's change the individual mileages. Six and a half, using our special characters. And we'll have 25 and 30. Done. Let's resize. Now, obviously motorways don't work in half mile units, but primary and non-primary rows do. So this is relevant because you just might want to tidy this up. And again, those little position grips on the text will help you do that if needed, like so. And let's change this sign to match the other. Oh, and we, we need to flip it because if you've ever driven around Glasgow, You'll know that the motorway there has many slip roads exiting to the light. To the right, even. <laughs> Madness! <laughs> okay, so, rounding up, I do realise that this site content is just a simple block library. But I am hoping it will appeal to a subsection of users, and may even encourage the rollout of Civil 3D to some of your colleagues, who may wish to have access to such content. The plan, looking forward, is to use this with the Autodesk 3D Sign and Road Marking toolset, which is new and currently in beta, but it may be included in 
pre-release form very shortly. I hope to author another video showing you how to get the best out of this pending toolset once everything with it is good to go. So hopefully as promised you found this instructional video simple and easy. I am hoping it has given you further confidence to continue to deliver excellence in Civil 3D. My name's Joe Wright. Thank you for watching.